Hey, happy Tuesday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Let me give you the latest information because this is still a growing threat and it's getting even stronger now. We have multiple days of chances for tornadoes. We even have tornadoes going on right now, passing through Kansas, Nebraska, and going to the east, southeast. But it is some severe thunderstorms with a lot of winds and your tornado threat is what it's turning into. Now these cells are pretty strong and these storms are considerable damage threat. We're one inch hail right now in this tornado threat. Plus we have this other wind banning that's going on. You can see all the damage and winds bowing out from this cell right here. So it's gonna hit a lot of town soon. And this is a growing threat, guys. We do have our tornado chance for today. Big one for tomorrow and it's in odd places because of this ridge. Plus this flood threat. We have a lot of flooding going on down in the south. You can see all the warnings going on with straight line winds going on as well. So just be aware that there's a lot going on, especially in the south. Because all this right here, this big low pressure going counterclockwise is what's bringing a lot of the issues. And this is going to be a big flood threat because of it. Because it's going to sit there and spin for a while, bring a lot of heavy rainfall. National Weather Service is picking up on it now. And it's going to continue. And I'm still showing chances for over a foot of rainfall, guys. So let me update you with everything we have. Because I've been trying to warn people over five days now about this growing threat that's coming on. And now the amounts is just getting to a warning level, especially for Texas. Not to mention the tornado threats that we do have. So if you know somebody in Texas, in Houston, San Antonio, Corpus Christi, Austin, even DFW might be in a heavy precipitation area. I will show you all the information I found. Please warn them, share this information to them, let them know what to be aware of because all these big cities have a lot of cement and nowhere's for all this rainfall to go and it's just going to add up to a lot of flooding. Now for today, we do have the severe weather. We have the wind threat. All this in the five and the brown is a wind threat. Plus you still have this 15% over the Carolinas and Southern Virginia like we talked about yesterday. And you have it right here for Kansas. Even significant winds right here in this black. That's at least 75 miles per hour wind gusts. Plus you have the hail threat in the same area. Down below, off the mid-Atlantic, but over here around Kansas and Nebraska, now you have significant chance of two inches or greater in diameter. Here's your cities and states at risk for your hail. And here's your cities and states at risk for your winds. Plus there's a tornado threat today, guys, and it will grow and move around. Right now you have the 2% and the 5%, and this is growing for tomorrow as well. So here's your cities and states at risk for today. And you can see this with National Weather Service, a corridor of severe thunderstorms is expected today across parts of the Kansas with embedded swaths capable of producing very large hail, damaging severe gusts, and a few brief tornadoes. Scattered damaging winds and isolated severe hail is also possible this afternoon into early evening across eastern North Carolina and southeast Virginia. And you can see this here this morning on HRRR 12Z, that big band of, of storms I showed you. You can see the bowing out coming out in that, and that is bringing some damage and winds behind that. So you got to be aware of that. That's going to be going on all evening long. While you still have this big rotating upper level low, bringing all this rainfall to the south for tomorrow and Thursday. It's going to add up, and it's going to bring more Tornado threats over here towards the upper Midwest, right close to the Rocky Mountains. But you can see it also for the Carolinas. As we go into this afternoon, you do get a couple cells that comes across. Nothing super serious, but you can see a couple strong cells that pass through all the way from 3 o'clock. It's really strong all the way till 7 o'clock and it moves off coast. So you do have some strong cells moving through. And you can see those storms today is bringing 50 and 60 miles per hour wind gusts with them going all the way down to the early morning hours. Then as that system comes in for tomorrow, it's going to bring the winds right back in for the southwest, the south central, and it is going to move further towards the upper Midwest. Still high 50 and 60 miles per hour wind gusts. It's showing over 78, but let's just keep it on a low wind. 50 and 60 miles per hour wind gusts is bad enough. And you're getting some strong 40s to 50s around the southeastern Texas, western Louisiana, southern Arkansas from the upper level low that's swinging around. Also, when it comes in later tonight into tomorrow, it is bringing winds over here for Southern California as well. So you need to be aware of California. Maybe something can come out of that because it's showing a lot of strong winds going into the northern half of Baja. So please be aware you do have some strong winds passing by y'all as well later tonight 
into the morning. Now this has ramped up even more for tomorrow. You have another big slight area risk. You do have chances for hail. You have chances for wind. But this is where it tightens up with the winds aloft that I showed you yesterday. And now you have the chances for the tornadoes. A big 2% and a big 5%. Here's your cities and states at risk for Wednesday for tornadoes. And National Weather Service has it as scattered strong to severe storms capable of producing damage in winds and hail and potentially a couple of tornadoes are expected Wednesday afternoon and evening within an area centered over the central high plains. And you can see this from your tropal pause as you still get an upper level low as this low pressure moves in gets that negative tilt. It starts really expanding the winds in the atmosphere. This is really what sets off your chances for tornadoes. As that comes in, then we get the subtropical jet that gets into it, and that gets into a negative tilt as well as we go from Friday and over the weekend. And that's going to bring your explosion of moisture additional to the south that's not showing up yet on Weather Prediction Center or National Weather Service. Remember, you've been knowing about this over five days. It is still happening. I'm still showing over a foot, potentially. But you can see at your 700 millibars that you do have your winds aloft, bringing your chances for your tornadoes for today. Then as you go for tomorrow, this ramps up over to southwest. Remember, I did show you some winds that you could be having as this goes over tonight into the morning. And then it ramps up again with your winds aloft for chances for tornadoes all the way to Thursday. Then as you go through Friday as well. So we do have an outlook for the upper Midwest also for Thursday. And I think it could extend for Friday as well. And so far, National Weather Service has a big area of severe weather for Thursday as this low pressure builds up, guys, because it does intensify for a short time. So you have the 5%, you also have the 15%. Now you have significant severe right here in this black. Significant severe is at least 75 miles per hour winds or two inches in diameter in hail or EF2 or greater for tornadoes, guys. So I will keep you updated. So far, this is your cities and states, and the white on top is just significant severe. And National Weather Service has as strong severe thunderstorms are forecast Thursday afternoon and evening across the Central Plains vicinity, where large hail can be expected along with locally damaging winds and possibly a couple of tornadoes. And you can see when you get your pressure system, so you have this big mesoscale in the atmosphere circling around, bring all this precipitation. But as you go into tomorrow, you can see that the surface low starts strengthening up right around that time. It strengthens up, then it weakens down. So there is a strong point that is coming with that for tomorrow. That's why it's intensified even more. But you can see your 500 millibar level way up in the atmosphere, not only this big old low pressure building, that you do have an upper level low over here, and that's what's just revolving everything around the atmosphere, bringing all that flooding. Then your subtropical jet gets in on it, and this starts revolving around, bringing all that moisture north, and that's what's gonna make an add to your flooding. This is an update on the Euros, the first 90 hours. You can also see on the previous run that it still shows. It just sits there for a while and spin, guys, and bring a lot of this flooding with potentially that cold front that comes through and it's not super severe. You can see this here on your vorticity as well. So as you have this upper level low revolving around, you have your big, strong, low pressure coming in, gets into that negative tilt and intensifies all the Thursday afternoon. Then you have your other upper level low down here by your subtropical jet. And then that goes at explosion of moisture straight north, right over Texas. And it could last a long time before this cold front comes through. Now, the cold front, when you show it like this, looks like it's super severe. And it's not that severe, guys, just like I showed you yesterday. But you can see for tomorrow, as all this builds up, the surface low strengthens up. And then once you go into Thursday, it gets super strong. You get a big banding all the way down to Texas, all the way into the Gulf of Mexico. And that comes by. Then you get your subtropical jet that kicks in over the weekend and just brings more storms to the south while you have that system in the upper Midwest. And that's what's adding to a lot of flooding. And you can just see it's storms for everybody. So as you have these storms for today, a lot of large hail chances right there for Kansas as that goes through the evening that's a lot of lightning strikes in that plus as you go for tomorrow it builds right back up all the way to the upper midwest and then still chances for hail as you go through Thursday watch this explosion of lightning strikes as you go through Thursday it just grows all the way into the gulf 
Then as you go through Friday, it goes to the upper Midwest, you get some severe weather. But once you go past that, then your subtropical jet kicks in and all this banding and storms comes in from the south and just stays there over the weekend over the south. And this is getting worse, guys. So first, National Weather Service has put this out. Two to three inches per hour, three to four inch totals. This was 18Z. And now we have this big warning. We have moderate levels now. And we have two different days of moderate levels. So we have it for today. We have it for tomorrow. Flash flood potential. Several rounds of thunderstorms containing intense rainfall rates could lead to localized rainfall over five inches daily through Wednesday. Numerous flash floods are likely, especially in the moderate risk area highlighted in the red, guys. Then when you look again, you get a trope pause up in the atmosphere. You can see how that gets that negative tilt. And then that subtropical jet gets in and that gets on that negative tilt. And as soon as that goes on that negative tilt, it whooshes all these storms over the south. And that's going to add up even more over the weekend all the way until Monday and maybe even Tuesday. And you can see it here on your precipital water. So you still have all this rainfall coming. You still have this flood threat that's coming. But once you go towards Thursday and Friday, once you get your subtropical jet involved, it's a big explosion of storms right there. But once you go into Friday, and bam, it pulls all this precipitation north, heavy amounts per hour. And that lasts Saturday, Sunday, and maybe even Monday before this cold front comes through. But the rainfall rates are still exceeding. So just like the Canadians saw a few days ago, you still have a chance over a foot, even over 15 inches for southern Texas. This is going anywhere from San Antonio to Austin. So just be aware of that. Plus, when you look, this is the Euro. It shows the heaviness is going around this region, not to mention all the heavy rainfall you get in the upper Midwest as well. But as you look with the Canadian, I saw it in the first place, it brings a lot of heavy rainfall to the upper Midwest. Plus, it brings all this towards the DFW instead of to the west. And the Canadians are the one that saw the 12 to 15 inches first. And as you can see, it did upgrade with your flood threat. So you do have the moderate level and you have the slight risk level for the Central Plains for today. But look how much it has grown for the South guys. Not only the marginal, not only the slight risk, but now you got this moderate risk going right over Houston. We're talking about a lot of sediment. None of this water is going to run off. It's just going to add up. And it's going to be for a couple of days. It's not just going to be for today. As you go for tomorrow, it's going to stick around and go even further to the north. Not only the big marginal, but you still have this slight risk for flooding over here in the upper Midwest, plus in the south. Your slight risk has grown all the way towards eastern Oklahoma and western Arkansas, western Louisiana, and you still have this moderate level going on for Houston. This is going to cause a big issue, so I do hope that y'all did heed my warnings last week because it's getting worse and worse. As you go to Thursday, it's going to stick around. You have the big marginal all the way to the lower Ohio Valley, but your slight risk has grown now for the upper Midwest. Now it's getting Montana and Western Dakotas in on it for a big slight risk for flash flooding for Thursday. And Friday, as you go through Friday, it comes right back. You have the marginal upper Midwest, you have it for the Ohio Valley. Now you have this slight risk going down to Texas. And it's heavy. It's already had a lot of rainfall. There's nowhere for this precipitation to go. So it goes immediately to the slight risk. And this is for Friday. And Saturday, bam, another moderate level. Not only the upper Midwest for the marginal, but look at this for Texas. You have a big slight risk going all the way up towards Oklahoma, but now you have this big moderate level that's just covering over towards San Antonio. So from Houston to Austin to San Antonio, and maybe even towards DFW, just be aware there's a lot of flash flooding coming your way. I've been trying to warn y'all for about over a week now. I know you need precipitation. This is going to help with your drought. But this is way too much at one time. Plus, you can see the update on the Arctic Isolation, the GFS, which is the red, Canadian green, Euro to blue. The GFS, instead of that crazy dip, it's, it's come to what's trending. It's the green with the Euro and the Canadian as well. But as you see, it's not super severe. As you go through Sunday, it brings some 40s to upper Midwest, maybe some freezing conditions for the higher elevations of the Rocky Mountains. That's about it. As you go through Monday, it's going to move a little bit further to the east. People waking up in the 40s, not really nothing to worry about, guys. It all warms right back up. This is not your daily highs. But as you can see, as you go through Tuesday, not only this cold anomaly, now you got all this heat. 
All this heat building on the west coast all the way into Canada. So instead of this cold anomaly, now you got the extreme temperatures moving in on your end. So just be aware that this cold front is only going to put people in the 40s. This is on the 17th. Nothing super severe in the 18th. So for the next six, 10 day temperature probability, you have well above average temperatures moving into the Northwest. Why are you getting below average temperatures for the South Central and the Southwest? Now I don't mean it's freezing conditions, just like I showed you, it's just well below your average temperature. Cause usually when you're hot, you're gonna be cold. And with the subtropical jet revolving around, it's gonna pull these temperatures further to the South. So it puts you in this little blue area, but trust me, it's not severe guys. Plus for the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes. Everybody in the white, this is your average temperatures. All right, so let's pick our winner for today. James Norris, congratulations. You are the winner of the Solar Weather Station. Make sure you contact me at this email, weathermanplustoday at gmail.com. That way I can get your address and ship it to you. Weatherman, thanks. No problem. Thank you so much, James, for watching my channel, support my channel. God bless you and your family. And I do hope you do like it. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I give one of these away every other day for the whole year of 2023. It's from Accurite. You've been around for over 80 years. They're celebrating 80 years this year. It's very easy to hook up. You put on a pole, a fence, a porch, connects to National Weather Service. You get your winds updated every 17 seconds, and it connects to weather on the ground. I will be giving away another one for tomorrow in tomorrow's video. But thank you so much for your time today. God bless you and your families. And thank you to all of y'all that's helping me alert. Not only everyone in these threats, but Texas is a big place with a lot of people. And this is affecting multiple cities that they have over there. So thank you for all your help. Today, I want to talk to you about Psalm 128. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands, Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Thy children like olive plants round about thy table. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion, and thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. Yes, thou shalt see thy children's children and peace upon Israel. Amen. God bless you all. Have a very blessed day today. Please prepare for these impacts because they're getting stronger and stronger, and I'm still showing the same intensity after the five days. So please beware for this. God bless you and your families. I pray you all will be safe and okay through these times. It's some pretty strong storms we're having. Just remember, all glory goes to God. <laughs> Our Father in heaven, Yahweh, and may he bless you every day of your life, now and forever. <laughs> Amen! <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Have a great Tuesday, everybody.